Hi everybody, Mike King from Profiling Evil. I had the opportunity tonight to join my old buddy Chris on Court TV with Vinny Politan on Crime Time. There were three cases that we talked about and I think you're gonna really find these interesting. The first is a man who is screaming out during an arrest, I can't breathe. Is this a George Floyd repeat or did law enforcement handle this one in an appropriate manner? I'm going to be really interested in what your comments are on that particular case. Then we go over to Ohio to the case of the murder of a woman who pulled up in front of her friend's house and was shot four times or potentially four times. Really interested in what your thoughts are there. And then finally we end up in Atlanta, Georgia where from police helicopters they observe people in parking lots racing and uh, creating all kinds of havoc. What are your thoughts on this? All right, it's crime time here on Closing Arguments. Let's introduce tonight's guests. Both of them host the YouTube series Profiling Evil. First, we have retired police commander and investigator Mike King. Mike also serves as the Global Directory of Emergency Communications and Fraud Solutions at Esri. Uh, Mike has served more than four decades in law enforcement and is the author of a new novel, Deceived, an investigative memoir of the Zion Society cult. Thank you. And also, we have former homicide detective Chris McDonough. Chris has been in public safety for over 35 years. He's a recognized expert on homicide and death investigations and is the host of The Interview Room with Chris McDonough. Great to have you both uh, back on the program um, the first story, I want to take a little time to, to, to talk about this first one um, because when I saw the video, uh, it reminded me in part on, of George Floyd and, and what happened in that case. And it's because of what um, the suspect is saying as police are taking him into custody. Uh, it's a man who says he can't breathe and it comes to us from the Springdale Police Department in Ohio. Is anybody hitting here, call? There we have a new uh, sheriff. Thank you. 25. Hey. He's right there. You can disregard that. I'll be around over there with. What up, buddy? Just chill. What's going on? She said, get him. Hey. What did I do? Just chill. I'm okay. What's wrong? What's going on? I'm about to separate. I got your keys. I'm going to separate from don't, her. Mama. Don't reach. Hey, 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 hey. My mother, my mother on the phone. Okay. Right. Just stay there. Okay. You're not, you're you're not leaving. Why am I leaving? leaving? You're not leaving. Why not? Until we sort this out, okay. you're not leaving. Do you hey, understand? Can I just go with my mom, please? Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Baby, just let me go with my mom. Okay, my mom on the phone. I love you. All right. Jeez. Am I under arrest? No, I said I'm not talking to her. Oh, am I under arrest? You are being detained How temporarily. How am I being detained for what? We got a call for a domestic disturbance. Oh, domestic disturbance. Okay, okay. okay. I'm sorry. We had an argument. Okay. That's it. And that's why we're here, and I'm waiting for another officer. So she can separate and I can separate? So we can separate each other, yes. both parties, and then, we're gonna, and then we're going to sort it out. Yes. Can I pee? You can walk no. in here. I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> Don't do anything I stupid. I have to pee. Keep, keep that door open. Stop! 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 Sir! Stop! 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 Give me another unit in here. Sir! Please! Mom! Hurry, Paul. No! 25, sir. 21, Mom. your location. Mom! I'm inside the men's restroom. Mom, please! Stop. I haven't done anything wrong. Please! Stop. I haven't. Please. Robert Humphrey's just haven't done anything wrong. Get I had to ground, be. Man. Get on the ground Get for what, Mom? Get on the ground for what, Mom? You're gonna get tased. A lot of drives done you. You're gonna get tased. Give me your arms. Give me your arms. Stop struggling. Stop it. Stop struggling. 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 Stop stru
He gave me a fake name. His last name's Oliver, not his. He said Robert name. Humphreys, but I don't. Mr. Oliver, have you taken anything? Have you taken any narcotics or any kind of prescription drugs today? Here we go. Was he acting like this when you first came up to him? He was acting all weird and fidgety. And then he, ah! he ran in here. We got squad coming, check you I out. He tried to lock me out of there. He tried to lock himself in there. Are you able to look for an ID in there? I haven't talked to the female half. Okay. She was just grabbing me from behind saying, don't let him near me. Okay. All right. Uh, how would you compare this to the George Floyd case? Now, there's the video is 20 minutes long. Obviously, we can't play the whole thing, but um, there were parts and, and people who, who saw it uh, posted earlier today where, where he is continuously saying, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And I want to start there, Mike King. When you've got a suspect on the ground and you hear those words, um, how would you compare the way they handled it versus what we saw in the George Floyd uh, case? Yeah, I, I thought a couple of things were really interesting. Number one, the officer was clearly trying to de-escalate, and him backing out when he had that chance in the in the uh, latrine itself to get into a confrontation, backed out. He's trying to slow it down. The other officer comes in with some information about uh, arrest warrants that are out on the guy, and they try to subdue him. But I'll tell you what, for anyone who hasn't been in a fight like that, it is absolutely exhausting. And uh, But when you hear those words, uh, what we see those officers do, Vinny, is we see him roll him to his side, and, and once they get control of him, and that's the first important thing is to get control of him because it's an officer safety thing. But then you see him uh, getting him over on his side, trying to sit him up, and, and until he becomes combative again, once he starts to get his composure after being stunned, uh, they have to then put more restraint on him. But, I mean, this was, this was a tough situation, but those fights are tough. They're hard. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple more facts here. There were a couple of warrants out for uh, this man. It wasn't just the domestic situation. Once they found out who he was, there were warrants, so they're going to take him into custody anyway. Uh, but, Chris, again, the thing that, that struck me was you've got someone, uh, you know, screaming. He's screaming like George Floyd did for his mom. He's screaming, Mama, 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 and I can't breathe. And the way these officers reacted versus what we saw in, in the George Floyd case. Yeah, you know, that's a, a, a great observation, Vinny, and I think uh, maybe that resonated quickly with the officers. Not only were they doing the officer safety, uh, you know, checks and balances, uh, but they also had to make sure that this subject uh, was also healthy uh, immediately. Uh, and to your point, you know, they did roll him over. Uh, they set him up and uh, immediately, you know, started to do a medical assessment on him, uh, unlike uh, the other situation that we've seen in the past. Incredible tr contrast. Again, we're five days away from the uh, George Floyd death murder trial. Um, but we will continue yeah. here in Crime Time. Our guests stay with us. We've got more Crime Time straight ahead, plus this. The George Floyd murder trial is just five days away. How can prosecutors prove Derek Chauvin caused the death of George Floyd if the medical examiner does not say he died from asphyxiation? And an arrest in Ohio that is reminding some people of the George Floyd case. You heard from our law enforcement experts, but what do you think? Did police handle this situation properly? Go to our Facebook pages and tell us what you think. I feel it's so important for anyone that has any information on this case to come forward to give the family closure. They need this. The kids deserve this. Her husband deserves this. Our community deserves this. Welcome back to our Crime Time segment here on Closing Arguments. Still with us, uh, retired police commander and investigator Mike King and former homicide detective Chris McDonough. Our next story comes to us from WEWS in Cleveland, Ohio. A mother's death sparks questions in the community. Rebecca Wilcox says she'll always remember Nikki Rollins as selfless. For years, their kids played together on the Portage Lakes Girls Fast Pitch League. And there were so many kids that would come up to the concession stand 
without any money, and she would make sure that every kid got treated equally. Rollins had three kids of her own, but she was like a mother to many. Nikki and her oldest daughter actually helped take care of my youngest um, for about like almost the first year and a half of her life. Sarah Somerville, one of Nikki's best friends, says the news of her death is still hard to comprehend. My youngest were trying to potty train her that I was excited that she went on the potty and I couldn't call and tell her or that I registered her for preschool the other day and I couldn't call and tell her. So. According to Akron police on February 17th, Rollins drove to a friend's house on Boulevard Street near downtown Akron. She was in the car alone when she was shot multiple times. Whoever fired the gun has not been caught. Detective Ron Gary says they're piecing together the puzzle, but can't do it alone. There are other witnesses that have called in with third party information saying other people know what's going on or why she died. Gary is asking those people to come forward. No piece of information is too small. Please help us solve this crime. Nicole didn't need to die. I feel it's so important for anyone that has any information on this case to come forward to give the family coat closure. They need this. The kids deserve this. Her husband deserves this. Our community deserves this. That's the least someone can do is just come forward. And as her loved ones wait for the wheels of justice to turn, they're doing what they can to honor Nikki, hosting a benefit later this month at Lala's restaurant with all the proceeds going straight to the family. She's always given back to the community and we want to give something back in her name to her family. All right, to me, this seems like one that could be solved, but how would you approach this investigation? Uh, Chris McDonough? You know, Vinny, so this is, uh, you know, the ultimate uh, sad scenario, right? Mother of three uh, sitting in a car at her girlfriend's, in front of a girlfriend's house. So the first thing you wanna do is collapse the investigation immediately with inside of that geographic region uh, to see if there's any connections there with her behavior and that and that uh, particular neighborhood. The second thing then would be to take that uh, out a little bit further into her own personal life. Uh, I think one of the most disturbing things here that would really uh, focus a little bit more uh, into uh, gathering additional intelligence is the amount of rounds that were fired. Uh, my understanding there may have been up to four rounds. That's pretty personal in nature. Uh, so that's where I would that's that's where they should be starting. And I'm sure that's where they did. Mike, um, where do you see investigators going here? Yeah, I mean, I, I think Chris is right on that. What we need to do is go back and look at the victimology first and foremost, figure out why this seemingly low risk individual ends up in this high risk situation. Was it a, a carjacking that goes bad? Was it a robbery that goes bad? Uh, Chris is nailing it. The, the, the aggressive nature of four rounds, if in fact those four rounds are fired at her and uh, it's a, it's a very selective fire. That makes it really personal, so you start looking at a pretty tight circle again because of this low-risk victim, a mom and, and a spouse. All happening in Akron, Ohio. Time for our yeah, final amazing. story tonight. It comes to us from the Atlanta Police Department. A street racer arrested. They started doing donuts. So I'm gonna keep my eyes on. It's a red charger with uh, two black stripes, uh, perpendicular, not not along the roof. You know, it's from one door to the other door. We'll keep our eyes on that one. Should 2055 now, Aaron? Hey, there's still a lot of cars in the. I'll stand by. All right, Phoenix, let me have the traffic. Uh, he's getting uh, officer is getting the driver of the red Dodge Charger detained. All right, it's been happening for years. How problematic are these street racers? I mean, Mike, we can go back to the days of Danny Zuko versus Leo uh, down on Thunder <laughs> Road, but how problematic are they? <laughs> yeah, that's the real difference, going to a country road where you're all alone versus going into a parking lot of a shopping center. I mean, that's crazy, Vinny. And, and you know, you wonder what, what's going on in the, in the mind of this. Uh, you, we, we build skate parks for kids because we don't want them going down the fronts of our businesses. Maybe we need to have a place for people, but it certainly isn't a, a parking lot. I mean, this puts so many people at risk and is so, uh, so wrong.
You know, Chris, I am seeing stories like this uh, across the nation, cities across the nation. Yeah, no, and, you know, to dovetail into both of uh, what you guys were talking about is uh, two rules. Number one, you can't outrun the radio. And number two, you definitely can't outrun a helicopter. So if you're doing donuts like this in the middle of a Kroger parking lot or wherever it was, uh, that's very dangerous. I mean, I, I picture my wife just walking to the grocery store and, and you know, having this thing taking place. Man, anything can happen. It's getting it's it's pretty crazy. All right. Chris McDonough and Mike King, always great to have you on. Appreciate your time, your expertise. And uh, don't forget to download uh, Profiling Evil on YouTube. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed these three segments on Court TV. I want to once again thank Vinny and the team for inviting me to come in and add some commentary to the cases that they're looking at. I'm going to look forward to reading your comments down below. And once again, I want to invite you to subscribe and like. I hope you're sharing this channel with your friends. And thanks so much for your support of Profiling Evil.